What is up everyone, this is Jake, and today I'm going to be showing you how I do skin tones with watercolors. Uh, there's several different ways you can do skin tones. You could buy skin tone watercolors, that's probably your easiest bet. But I really love the way I do these because it gives me a lot of tonality, and it gives a lot of depth to the colors, I feel anyways. And I really learned this from Scott Christian Zaba. If you've never watched his channel, go check him out. He is a phenomenal watercolor uh, gouache. He's just a great artist in general. He hates the way he does acrylics, but his acrylics still are phenomenal. Um, but his watercoloring is mm, chef's kiss, top notch. Go check him out. He's incredible. Um, but let's go ahead and get started with this. But as always, before we do, like and subscribe. That's always good. You know, I like that. It really helps me out. And also, when I show you how to do this, let me know how you do skin tones. Like, I really want to learn different ways on how to do this. This just, just so happened the way I like to do it. Um, because Scott Christian Zava's way, he has a way of layering watercolors, which is, to me is really fascinating because it really matches the style he draws in, which is that really bold black line, kind of almost like a cartoon caricature type feel. And that's what I like. And that's how he does it. And I've just kind of gravitated towards that. Uh, but if that's something that you like, let me know. And, or if there's something you do that's totally different also, let me know. And I'd like to learn. So the first thing we do when we are doing skin tones, it, you want to determine what kind of skin tone you're going to have. So the first character I'm going to do here is going to be this guy. I'm going to make him a more more of a pale skin kind of person. Um, even when I do pale skin, it turns out a little bit kind of like saturated and heavy, which is fine. I like that. But compared to the other ones I do, it makes it a little bit more understandable. Um, I like to water down yellow quite a bit. So I'm going to have three different tones. It's going to be yellow, red, purple. Yellow is your highlights. Yellow and the white paper showing through is your highlights. Uh, red is your mid-tone, and then purple is going to be your shadows. That's how I basically learned it from Scott Christian Zavra, and that's the way I like to do it. So we're going to go with a really light, I'm taking a mop brush, one with a really light yellow, and I'm just going to kind of color the whole thing. Except for where my absolute top highlights would be, I'm going to leave those with the paper showing through. So the top of the head there, the little uh, Rembrandt triangle on the cheekbone, the tip of the nose, I'm going to leave all those, kind of the top of the chin there, leave all those white. It's not going to be that much of a difference because it is such a light yellow tone, but it's really going to help kind of uh, make those highlights pop a little bit. Top of the shoulders there, kind of leave that little highlight on there. And I always love to go back with a white pen too and add highlights, so it's not a big deal. So what I'm going to do is step by step show you the difference in the in the base layers. So on the this one I'm going to make a little bit more tan, and this one I'm going to make much more of like an African American skin tone. So this one I'm going to make more of a tan Caucasiany uh, type of skin tone. So I'm going to go a little bit more yellow. It's going to be a bit more saturated because I'm going to be putting more red and purple over it. So I want it to be a bit more saturated. So this is going to be much stronger yellow, and if you can tell already, it is. Um, I'm not going to worry as much about my solid white highlights with the uh, letting the paper show through because where this is going to be so saturated with yellow, uh, it's going to be able to pop my uh, white highlighter on there a lot, or my gel pen. That's what I use to highlight with is a, uh, a Signo, or is it a Pentel, I think? It's a, or a Uni, it's a Uni Signo pen, Uni Signo white gel pen. Those are, those are really good to highlight with. They go over uh, watercolors excellently, and I really think they're awesome. I use them all the time. But yeah, if you can see here, you can just just from looking, it's kind of have a glare there because it's not dry yet. But you can see the difference in just the yellow bases. Now he kind of looks jaundicey or like a Simpsons character, and he will. Don't worry, they'll look like that uh, from the beginning. So for this, um, for the more African American skin tone, I'm going to do the same thing. Um, kind of go with that same yellow layer because in uh, with doing the yellow, the red, I also throw a layer of brown in there or whatever kind of burnt sienna, whatever tan color you want to throw in there, depending how dark you want to make the skin tone. And then uh, you still shade with the purple. The purple is such a good color to shade with because it's just a mixture of that red skin tone and the bluish and colors you have in the skin tone. It's just a natural color to, to shade with. That or you can shade with blue. Personally, I like purple because I like kind of bringing out the bloody red color in the cheeks and stuff like that. And... Uh, that's something, once again, like I learned from Scott Christian Zabra. He's a, he's a phenomenal artist. Go watch him. Go watch him right now. Okay, after a quick blow drying, I go ahead and I go back to my palette here. And we're going to grab us some medium red here. I have like an orangish red and then I have a much deeper red. But we're going to go with like a medium red. So a very good crimson red there. And on this first one I'm going to do, I'm going to keep it in the same order I've been going in. I'm going to go with a much lighter red. So I'm going to water it down quite a bit. 
And so when I apply the red here, it's going to definitely show up, but it's not going to be as dark as the other ones are going to be. So keep away from the, you want to do the mid-tones here. So the things that would be the highlights, um, you want to kind of keep those in there as the yellow. Now your extreme highlights, such as like I said, the top of the forehead, the tip of the nose, you don't want to get anywhere near those. And I'll show you why in a minute. I will end up going over all this with red again, if you want to blend it together, because that's kind of what I like to do. Um, but I'll show you what I mean. So you want to make sure you dry these layers individually. Uh, at least that's the way I do it. I like to dry them individually. That way you kind of have these uh, this contrast between each layer. And you keep the tonality of the watercolors and the skin tones uh, kind of in check. So I don't know if that makes any sense. But that, it makes sense to me. It processes in my brain just right. So I like just kind of how that is. That kind of how that is. It looks a little sloppy, but that's how it's supposed to look. So now I'm going to go back to my red. Drop some more water in here. Get a bit more red. Saturate it quite a bit more. Okay, now we're going to go over to this guy. Notice this is much more red, but that's totally fine because we were going to make him a little bit more dark complected. So make sure those highlight areas, we kind of leave them be. So like top of the ear there. And remember, we can uh, come back with the white pen and, and add these highlights a lot easier on this guy because his skin tone will be so much darker. So notice right there, I went over the cheekbone, shouldn't have done that, so we can go back and dab it off, no problem. It's one thing I love about watercolors, they are very forgiving, for sure. I like to do my really stark contrast colors. Like, he looks very stark, like it's very red, you know. Whenever it gets done, though, you're gonna see what I do. I basically take an entire color of red, which is gonna help bring everything together, a real thin coat, and I go over the entire thing. And when I do that, like I said, it helps bring everything together as like one uniform color. And when you make everything a bit red, it doesn't, it brings down the actual bright red a whole lot. So, and everything is full of blood, you know, faces are full of blood, what can I say? So they need that red there. So if you have a bunch of red on there, that's totally fine. It's going to look organic. It's going to look natural. That's what you want when you're doing a, uh, a watercolor painting of skin. You want that natural, organic red color to the face because, well... That's how our faces look. We're full of blood. And that's science, kids. Science. Okay. So, there we go. There's pretty much what we need on these guys. Like I said, it's real sloppy. I like them being sloppy. I don't like them being super concise and clean. I like my art kind of just slopped down on the page. Probably because it's easier and I'm not great at arts. But then whatever, it's fine. Let me go ahead and blow dry this. So once I have my red tones laid down, I'm gonna go ahead and start with my purple for my shadows. And I'm gonna see once I lay the purple tones down if it's too uh, too much of a contrast between the colors. And if it is, like I said earlier, I go over the whole thing which is the red wash. And kind of brings it all together, makes it a little bit more cohesive. But sometimes you really want that stark contrast. And if that's what you're going for and that's what you get, then awesome. Then you have a landed right in the pocket you need to land in. But I got it real thin down. Let's go ahead with this purple. And let's go ahead and start doing these shadows in here. Still going with the mop brush. Like I said, I like it kind of sloppy and messy, which is um, kind of adds some, I don't know, some, some style and some flavor to your drawing. If and you ask me. Go in here, get that nose shadow here. We'll go here under the lip. And I basically want to go wherever my, my shadows would be. Like the deep shadows that you're going to be, uh, you're putting in there. So kind of find those. Like right here, with the whole head would cast a shadow down here. And this looks a bit off, but whenever it dries, you'll notice it, it comes together a lot more than it looks like right now. And that takes you a while to learn. But that's one thing you need to remember when you're doing these skin tones and stuff. Just let them dry first. Let your layers dry. To me, the way I'm doing this anyways, I like to dry them in between. Uh, dry your layers. See what they look like after you dry them. Then go and adjust if need be. Because uh, if you go and you start making all these changes and stuff while it's still drying, it's going to add a lot of sloppiness and a lot of, uh, not good sloppiness. I like some sloppiness, but not, it won't be good sloppiness. It'll add a bunch of sloppiness to your drawing that you're not going to want. So just let it dry. Be kind of patient. I know that's crazy me telling someone to be patient. But, uh, but yeah, so just, I love the way that purple, though. You can see the red, you can see the yellow through that purple, and it just adds so much vibrancy to that. I think it's so cool. I love the way that looks. Like, it's not necessarily super natural, like a <laughs> super natural. It's not a very natural color, but it's it works because it looks organic, even though it doesn't look natural, if that makes any sense whatsoever. But you want to go ahead and shadow in these areas that would get heavy shadows on them, kind of under the chin there, inside the ear, right here, under the, or on the neck, 
Go ahead, get a little bit of that forehead. Right there, under the nose. And you gotta do the sound effects. Remember, that makes you paint better, I promise you. So I know for, the, for sure I'm gonna do a red overtone on this guy because if you notice, the contrast is very stark and it's a bit more than I wanted. So uh, go ahead and paint that in there. So when I go over that with red, though, it's going to kind of bring that whole guy together. Like, you, you'll see, it's really cool how this works. I really love doing this. Okay, so now, before we go into the purple with this guy, like I said, we're going to go for more African-American skin tone, so I'm going to go with a brown. So let's go with this kind of medium brown here. I have a, a lighter brown and a darker brown, but I want to have a, a bit of reddish tone to that brown because I wanted to have that nice life behind it. So I'm going to go ahead with that medium brown right here. And I'm going to go decently heavy with it, uh, not obscuringly heavy. Like, I don't want it to cover up that red completely. I want you to be able to see the red through it. But at the same time, I want you to be able to tell the, that there is a brown tone over it. So, and I kind of just go over the whole thing with it. And I know this seems a bit counterintuitive. Um, I go over it pretty much leaving the highlights uh, wherever I wouldn't touch it. You know what I mean? Like, so, the highlights on the nose here, the highlights on top of the head... Whatever highlights you would normally have, you want to leave that kind of red when you're doing the brown skin tones. I really kind of like how these turned out. Uh, I don't, I don't hate them. Normally, I wouldn't go over these with a with a red wash, but I'm going to go ahead and do that now so you can see what they look like when I do that. So I'm going to go back and take my water and water down this red quite a bit. You don't want a super strong red, just enough to lay a thin tone over the entirety of your piece so it can kind of bring it all together. So notice you can still see all the variation, you can see all the tones in there, but it all kind of has like a red glaze over it. And that's what you want to go for. You basically want to bring down the uh, the highlights, you want to bring down the shadows, and kind of level them all out. It's, it's almost like a compressor, but for, uh, for a painting. So you kind of compress all the colors to be more on the same level. So I think this is great. And you notice when you do that, if you have a uh, low quality paper, it tends to start bleeding the stuff together, which is kind of cool. It kind of works to your advantage. And that's one thing I've learned too. Using cheaper quality products, you can make them pretty good if you just you just gotta kind of work with them. You know, you don't let them work against you. You gotta work with them. So that's a good way of doing it, I think. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit more red here. I'm gonna dab that up some. Yeah, see, I think that's great. It's gonna look really good when that all draws together. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing here. Go a little bit more red because I got a darker skin tone over here. And then I'm going to, now be careful because there is so much more color on this, it is going to like bleed a lot quicker. So you want to go much faster over this when you do that. So this definitely has a darker skin tone. When it dries, be, be sure, remember that when it dries, it's not going to dry as vibrant as it is now. It'll definitely lighten up some, so don't be afraid to, to put it on there and notice that it's a little bit too dark whenever you get done. Because once it dries, it'll look a lot better. It always does. It always looks better when it dries. Okay, now for the brown skin tone, I think it could be a little bit darker in spots. Like I kind of like it a little bit more chocolatey. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, add a bit more of that brown, and I'm going to add a bit more of a darker brown. And kind of give it a bit more of a richer tone. Because I really want those uh, those kind of shadows to pop with this. Before I even need to do the, the purple tones to it. Because I still need to do the purple tones to that. And where I've already went over that with a brown color, and it's kind of all brought it all together, because you can see kind of the red in the face there, and the red here on the sides. You don't really need to go over it and wash it with a uh, with a red tone. So I'm going to go ahead and hit it with some with this, uh, this, this more rich brown, because I think it's going to look really good with it. Who doesn't love a tan skin, man? I love that color. It just looks so good. Kind of hit there on the shadow areas. And the thing about this is you can hit pretty much anywhere and it'll be okay. You can throw your highlights in uh, in post, as they say. You can uh, fix it in post. But you can go back through and you can add your highlights when need be with a uh, with color pencil, with your, uh, your white uh, gel pen like I like to use. But I'm going to go ahead and leave a couple spots uh, highlighted with the, uh, the kind of lighter brown color, which is totally fine. And then... Uh, kind of color everything else in because remember we still have to add that purple this has no purple on it yet that purple really is going to help bring out the uh the pop of that uh of those colors those earthy tones for the uh the brown color there all right so now we're going to go ahead and put the purple tones in uh the darker skin character here now like i said you want to make sure you do a little bit faster because there is so much color on this and notice i've kind of mixed a little bit of a uh, little bit of purple with the red and with the brown, that's fine. That's going to be a good tone. Total accident, but you know what? Sometimes those accidents work. What did Bill Bob Ross say? Happy accidents. Let's go ahead and tone it down a little bit with water. 
All right, now it should be perfect. Yeah, there we go. A little bit darker with these tones. We can get the ear there. Kind of get the jaw under the nose. Remember the sound effects. That's what makes it work. We're going to say that the shadow is uh, this way. Lots coming from this direction. Kind of how I've kept it the whole time. So, I'm going to keep that kind of the same way. Keep it consistent. That's all that matters. Keep your shadows consistent. So, keep the bottom of the nose there. That top lip can be in shadow. Okay, so earlier I was talking about how I didn't want to go over this with another color again, but where I've dabbed it up so much you can tell there is some light areas here. So I'm going to go back over it with that brown color. I'm going to, I'm going to lighten this, that darker brown color up I had, and I'm going to kind of wash the whole thing in that. Kind of bring everything together again, because it's kind of falling apart a little bit, just because uh, I blotted out that, that area here, so it's a little bit too light. But once I bring everything together with this brown, it should look mm, awesome. And it's already looking way better. I like it a lot. And just to make sure these colors properly well, I'm going to color the background so you can kind of see what it looks like. And I'm going to use my uh, black outliner to, to give it a nice bold outline. Then I'm going to highlight it with a white highlighter so it's really going to kind of pop though. And with the power of movie magic, I went ahead and finished the background and added my bold outline and my white highlights. As you can see, it makes everything come together and everything pop. You have three very distinct skin tones, and I think it looks awesome. So if you enjoyed this, if you like my tutorial here, go ahead and leave me a like. Subscribe to the channel. That always helps me out. Drop me a comment below. Let me know if you do anything different when you do skin tones or if you have any questions for me. I would love to help you out or I would love for you to help me out. So thank you all so much for watching. I do really appreciate it as always and keep on drawing on. Later.